Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos that I'm doing about uh, some of the the basic memory circuits that are uh, used in digital electronics. Um, and we've done uh, latches and flip flops, and in the last video we created a binary counter. Um, and in this video, uh, we're going to make some improvements to this binary counter. Uh, this is being done in Digital Works software, which is digital simulation software. And um, there is a link in the description below to where you can get hold of this for free. Uh, feel free to grab that and to play along with me with with this simulation. Um, it, simulation is more vi uh, visual and cheaper than doing these things with actual chips. Um, so. That's my justification for why I'm doing it. And this uh, set of videos is actually part of a larger set of videos that I'm doing, which um, which go from uh, the very basics of digital electronics and uh, Boolean logic and Boolean algebra, all the way through to the creation of a four-bit uh, simulated CPU, which we'll be doing in digital works. Uh, so there's a roadmap for where I'm going with that also in the description down below. Um, as I said <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to be making some uh, improvements to this 3-bit binary counter that I've got already running. And you can see that it's simulating and it's, it's doing the counting. Um, this is the test circuit that I created for it. Um, and I want to make two, um, two additions to this, which are two extra inputs. So the first one is going to be... Um, um, and enable. So although the clock is working internally with the JK flip-flops flip -flops as an enable, I want to actually be able to switch this clock on and off. Um, sorry, this counter on and off, even though the clock will stay constantly running. Uh, so that's an extra level of enable. And the other thing that I want to do is to have a reset so that I can, um, I can set the counter, whatever state it is in, back to zero uh, before we uh, start counting. Um, so in order to do this, I'm going to get back into the circuit that I had with the JK flip-flop, uh, and I'm going to make some alterations there. Um, so let's stop simulating. Uh, and uh, Open circuit has changed. No, I don't want to change the uh, uh, save this particular circuit. Um, this is the counter. 3-bit counter. Um, and before I go any further, I'm going to do uh, save as just in case I end up overwriting my previous version. So counter three birds. Um, I'm going to call it controls. So there are uh, the two things that I'm uh, trying to achieve. One is going to be affecting uh, the clock input, which is here. And the other is uh, to reset the whole thing. Uh, now, uh, a couple of videos ago, when I brought up the JK flip-flop and demonstrated it, I mentioned the fact that there are two pins under here, uh, which are not labelled. And, and these uh, happen to be a set pin and a reset pin. Uh, so, hopefully, if they're in the order that I remember them to be in, which is that it's set and reset, then I can use the reset, and I'm just going to demonstrate this, hopefully, uh, using... Um, using an interactive input, let's start up simulating. Uh, we haven't got a clock, so we need to get a clock input working on here as well. So that started counting, and if I hit the reset. It goes zero once I've let go of the reset. So it's interesting, it goes um, high and then low. Okay, so a pulse on the reset will reset it. And that's good enough for me. Uh, that's fine. Maybe um, if I did it on the set, that would be different. But I'm going to use that. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing that we want is to add um, an enable on the clock line. Uh, so that we can use that as a, a switching it on and switching it off process. Let's just stop simulating whilst I do that. However, it's unlike other circuits that we've had, this um, uh, this enable is active low, as it's called. 
which means is when it switches from high to low that the uh, it has an effect on the circuits. And so instead of using an AND, uh, we used we need to use an OR uh, gate. And instead of just taking a straight uh, input for this, I'm going to need to invert it because I want it to be uh, on means running and off means uh, zero means not running. So let's uh, hopefully demonstrate this and then we'll turn it into a macro. Uh, so if I have remembered the circuit correctly, let us uh, simulate. So the first of first thing that's happening is that although the clock's going, the counting's not happening. And if I hit the go button, then it starts to count upwards. And if I stop the go button and send a pulse to the uh, yes. So I think, like I said before, maybe I've got the wrong line here. So let's use the the other line for each of these. They're not labeled, that's my excuse. So let's give this a go on the first of the lines. Rather than the second. Right, are we still simulating? Yes, okay. So let's enable the counting. One, two, three. Right, let's stop counting at that point and do a reset. And it resets it down to zero. That seems to be correct. Let's count again. Starting again from zero. That's fine. Let's get that far and try and reset. It's fine. Let's try and reset again whilst it's at zero. So that's working as we hoped. We've got a, um, a go and we've got a reset um, so let's turn this into a macro let's stop simulating it. get rid of the internal clock turn that back into a um, tag I'm going to have some extra pins on our output uh, but we need to turn those into tags these inputs so that's the Go line, and that's the reset line. Um, so those are tags. Why them up? Is that right? No, that's I've just made a mistake. You have watched me, and you didn't tell me. You didn't say anything to me. So you might have done. I can't hear you, obviously. Okay, that works meant to be connected. Right. Template editor. So we've still got the um, counter three bit uh, as was. Um, I'm not confident that that um, clock is wired up right. In fact, it's wired up to that one there. Uh, so let's uh, delete that so that it forces us to do a remapping that tag isn't being used to come back to the template editor you see it's disconnected it so that's good uh, so we're going to need a couple more inputs um, also I'm going to want to say that this has got uh, some extra stuff so I'm going to put the word controlled on there does that look reasonable counter three bit controlled and we're going to have two extra pins which are going to be a go pin and a reset pin Let's just move that a bit. Um, didn't want more of that. Just want that bit of text there. Move it a bit further just to give me a bit of space. So the output pins have stayed mapped. Um, so this gives us uh, a little bit of help with this. And Go and reset. I need to shuffle those around a bit. 
the pin for the reset's a little bit not quite in line with the others. Is that better? No, it's worse. What's not in line? Something's not in line. There doesn't seem to be any kind of tools for lining up objects together or spacing them exactly, which is a little bit of a pain. It does have a grid. Um, <clears throat> there we go. So uh, we're going to need to do the wiring up again. So this is, um, that's the clock input. So I we tag that. So go input. And that's our reset input. And let's save. And then hopefully demonstrate this with the software circuit as usual. Uh, so this is clock 3-bit controlled. And we need three inputs and three outputs. Hopefully to demonstrate this working. Okay, not particularly lined up on leads. And again, I'm not very bothered because this is just a testing circuit. Right, simulate. Get the interactive thing. So, nothing's happening. Um, and in fact, <clears throat> in order to make anything happen, we've got the wrong thing there. We want to actually connect to the clock rather than input. Uh, we could sit there and flick that input up and down as much as we like, but we might as well use a clock. Uh, but it's still not going to go. Enable, so let's enable it. Come on. And it's counting, which is what we expected. And if we stop it counting we can hit reset and it should clear it there we go uh, what happens if we hit reset whilst we're actually running it will hold it at zero until we take off reset again okay so that's got extra functionality <coughs> um, <coughs> uh, and it's a particular use of these memory cells uh, to make this uh, three bit boundary counter and this is a, a an element uh, a, a macro that we'll be using um, quite a bit later down the line in the roadmap of our uh, simple CPU. Uh, anyway, that's it from me for now.